Hello and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. Anybody who subscribes or follows any of my channels will know I am a complete mineral makeup addict. I truly believe it suits all skin types, but today I thought I'd bust a few mineral makeup myths. And who better to ask than SJ, international makeup artist for Bare Minerals. This is me after this mineral makeup magician has worked her <laughs> magic. But we're gonna go back to the beginning, me with no makeup on. Myth one, should concealer be used under or over your mineral makeup? Do you know what? This is actually a personal preference thing. You know, you can try your concealer before and then put your foundation on. You won't need so much foundation. Um, or you can put your foundation on first and then pop a little bit of concealer over the top. It's really what works for you, so try both and see what you prefer. So let's start with um, a golden-based concealer. Okay. And we'll pop a little bit around the nose and on any areas of redness. Um, this can actually also be used around the eye area, but as you say, sometimes it's nice to use something a little bit lighter around the eye. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this yellow tone concealer concealer, pop it on the back of my hand. So I'm just gonna pick this up, the product up, using the Maximum Coverage Concealer Brush, and let's pop this around the nose on That's any rosiness. That's the one I use. So instantly, the yellow... Counteracts the redness. Yeah, it's literally gone. Do you know, it's really interesting, because when I was talking to my niece, who was my last person to convert to mineral makeup, she said, oh, it doesn't give enough coverage for me. And I said, well, that's funny, because some people say it gives too much coverage. And you know, more often than not, people say to me, you've got such beautiful skin. And I go, I don't have beautiful skin. I have great makeup. Mm. But I think the whole point of mineral makeup is you can build it up. And you can build it up and give a really heavy coverage. Definitely. I mean, the great thing about mineral makeup, you're totally in control of a sheer, a medium, or a full coverage. Myth two, mineral makeup is not for every skin type. You know I'm a fan. I've used mineral makeup for 10 years, ever since it's been in the UK. Why do people think you can't use it on all skin types? Because I don't believe that. I have converted my mother, my elder sister, my niece who's got problematic skin, my gay best friend who presents on TV, and a beauty editor, all to mineral makeup. So that's every age from sort of 18 to 80. What do you think? Perhaps they're not using it properly. Maybe they could be using too much. Maybe it's the skincare routine underneath. So all we do, tap a very small amount of bare minerals into our lid. I'm just gonna swirl my brush into the mineral foundation. So we've loaded our brush and the minerals are basically uh, going down into Locked the into brush. Locked into brush, yeah. yeah. because it works like an, a sort of um, a fountain pen. Slowly, as we buff into the skin, it's gonna morph into the skin, work with the natural oils of the skin, work with any primers or moisturizers you've got on, and you should just get a beautiful, smooth finish um, that's going to kind of bring everything together that you've got on your skin and just give you a flawless look. Because yeah. that feels like I've got nothing on my face. And another thing people say about mineral makeup is it's ashy and flat. Does my face look ashy mm. and flat? It doesn't at all. Dewy, gorgeous, It youthful, looks like your skin, plumped. just perfect. Yeah, your skin on a really yeah. good day. On a really good day. <laughs> Myth three, contouring is just for young faces. I'm determined to prove it's for older faces like me too. And I'm just gonna do some little dots with this. So not too much. I'm just going to dot around the eyes. Do you want to have a look in the mirror? I bet I look gorgeous. She does. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to use the same brush that we use for the concealer around the nose area and just gently blend into the skin. This is buildable makeup. So start off with a little bit and then if you need more, you know, just pop it on top. And then you can take it right up onto the highs of the cheekbones, above the lip area to really highlight the lip and make your lip appear fuller. Pop it onto the chin. So we'll do that as well. This is kind of like, um, it, we call it stroke of light, but a lot of people call it stroke of genius because it just kind of, it's one of those little things. Don't make me smile, otherwise my face <laughs> will disappear into crinkles. You won't <laughs> get the makeup on. Stop it. When you get older, you wary about anything that is not matte. So you worry about anything that's got shimmer or sparkle in. But actually, using something like this to draw light to the face rather than shimmer, yeah. what you do is use light reflective particles rather than sparkle. And I just think it's much more youthful. It is. So we're just highlighting the center panels of the face. And then when we come to our contouring, we'll kind of contour the outside edges of the face. And that way we get that beautiful contrast. I'm just going to pop what's left on my brush over your eyelids just to smooth the appearance of the lids. Just to make sure we've got rid of any rosiness or anything in the eyelids. A lot of women do get redness and sort of red veins and things in the lids. So it's really good to put either something like your brightener or your concealer over the lids to begin with. And that's just going to be an amazing base ready to then go and apply your eyeshadows, liner, or even if you just want to wear mascara and just have that natural look. This is just a lovely light, soft, um, sandy color, California bronze shade. And I'm just using a light fluffy brush. 
So I'm just gonna tap into my bronze forehead, down under the cheek and under the jaw. So if you imagine... It's like two E's, isn't it? Yeah, two E's or a three. But because this is such a light colour, it's not going to look too heavy, too harsh. You're not going to look too um, highly contoured, but it is just going to add a pop of colour. You can take what's left on your brush down onto the neck and decollete. Okay, so slightly darker bronzer, and we're just going to come up under the jaw. So pop your chin up for me, and this is what I literally do on myself at home, is just backwards and forwards. But remember, we don't want a line around the this jaw. This is very relaxing. <laughs> and then take it down the centre of the neck, and then just a little bit onto the decollete. So I'm going to push back the appearance of the lid okay. by using my contour here. So I'm using a soft fluffy brush and we're just going to come slightly above the crease contour just to lift the appearance of the eye there. We don't go up into the brow, we want to leave a natural highlight underneath the brow bone. Do you use a liner under the eye? Because I like to use a soft shadow under the eye. Not under, under here I don't, because I'm wary of my eyes looking smaller. One tip I quite often use on myself um, and any of my models that are kind of 35 plus um, is a little bit of bronzer under the eye. You create the illusion of, of shadow. Thicker, yeah, th and thicker lashes. But you don't than... get the line. <gasps> So would you use exactly the same bronzer you use for your contouring? Yeah, I do use the bronzer I use for my contouring. Let's use a little bit of the skinny dip. You okay. could even use a tiny bit of your blush. The other thing is not joining up either side, so just keeping it in the centre and kind of coming down a little bit further will give that roundness, that openness to the eye. So if you just look up for me, I'm just going to take it underneath the I love that I've been a beauty editor for 25 years and I've just learned something. Oh, I well, love I'm this. glad that you... <laughs> Using the bronzer <laughs> under your lower lashes. The other thing about this is, because you've got such beautiful brown eyes, you know, we're using a tone that's going to really bring the eyes out. So would you not use that? Would you use a different one on your blue eyes? No, I would use the same because you think orange and blue or yes. orange and green. So it works for anybody. And it's in a way like you're mimicking shadow, aren't you? You're so. mimicking shadow rather than saying, look at me, I've got my eyeliner on today. And we're not joining it up at the edges, we're just taking it down the centre to create a little bit of shadow and a little bit of roundness and volume to the eye, but without saying, wow, I've got, you know, loads of liner on today. I already use this, I love yeah, this colour. I was going to go for this, but I, I thought you might color. want something more nude. No, I love this colour. Right, let's just whack this on. It's I love gorgeous. this. So because it's a gloss, you don't really need a lip brush, you can actually just go straight in over your lip liner, take it right to the edge. They smell amazing as well, don't they? <laughs> this is a great colour on you. It's a good colour, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's a kind of suits all. So this is the finished daytime look. Um, really straightforward, flawless mineral makeup skin, created with makeup, not with my skin, and a really nice daytime look. I'm so glad that we've managed to bust a few myths today. And you look absolutely stunning. Well, I had to put myself on the line, didn't I? <laughs> so you saw me with no makeup on. This is me with my finished look to prove that mineral makeup can work for absolutely anybody.